Hey there everybody and thank you so much for clicking on this video about Muppet Race Mania for the PS1 and for as silly as this video is going to be today, in all seriousness just for a second, it is coming up to Mental Health Awareness Week and because of that the amazing guys over at BetterHelp have very kindly decided to sponsor today's video. They're a private online and affordable service that connects you to any personalised therapist or counsellor wherever you happen to be, indoors or out. You can even remain anonymous if you want to or use texts or video chat, it's completely up to you. This is a topic very close and important to me as well because I myself am on medication for depression and anxiety, I have been for years, and one of the biggest factors to me feeling ten times better than I did years ago was talking to someone, a counsellor, about all the shit that was going on in my life at the time. And just remember, there is no shame in admitting that you need help or need to talk to someone. Everyone at some point needs to talk to somebody. It's completely normal, completely healthy. And I'm just so glad that a service like BetterHelp exists as a more convenient and affordable method of getting help, as opposed to other places that can offer professional help. And even if if your finances are a little bit tight, if you qualify, they can help you out with the costs as well. So it's all good, basically. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring. And please head to the description right now and get the conversation started. Please enjoy the video, everybody. It's time to meet the Muppets on the Muppet Show. Shut! Who threw that? You could get rid of me, Kenny! Oh my god, not Pup Icarus. Also, that rhyming was intentional, thanks for noticing. I am far from done with you and your channel! Well, you know what? I am. I was done with you years ago. We tried some things and it just didn't work out. So why don't you just go back upstairs and be my Game Boy Micro holder again? <gasps> but you never used the Game Boy Micro! I was covered in dust! And that's exactly why I'm asking you to go back up there. You rude little c- Don't say it! Take a look at that terrible game I threw at you. That's all I want you to do. I'll leave you alone after that. Oh, I see. So is this your last act of revenge, then? I guess it isn't too unreasonable of a request. So... No! <laughs> <laughs> Only kidding. This game's good. Greetings and salutations, my beautiful people, and welcome to the Kanekura Show, where I always have to do the ditty ditty of deciding whether or not things deserve to be slaughtered or salvaged. And today, we're going to be having a look at the wrong way up. Muppet Race Mania on PS1, and this has been a very requested game for the show for a long time, and for good reason. It's pretty bloody good. And it's been a while since I've looked at not only a good game, but a good kart racer, so I figured, why not do it now? I can't really say much else about it because there's no dramatic build-up or anything. It's not like this is the worst game ever or anything. It's pretty good, honestly, so enough stalling. Curtains, please, and let's begin. I like The Muppets a lot. Well, what I mean to say is I really like the first few seasons of the original series of The Muppet Show, you know, when the puppetry was way more impressive and ambitious for the 70s, the guests were really cool and genuinely hilarious, and when Gonzo's voice was all I shall place a member of the audience in a trance instead of the much more boring Before your very eyes, I will ride this motorcycle Look, don't hate on me, guys. Gonzo's a fucking alien. It matches him better when he sounds like he's being strangled Look deep into my eyes! Despite the reboot movie being pretty great though, I'm not too into the Muppets nowadays and honestly I was so indifferent about Muppets Most Wanted that I don't think I'll ever see another Muppet movie again. But to give you an idea on how much I like the Muppets, I went as far as to create a director's cut edition of the Muppet Christmas Carol with the Blu-ray version of the film spliced with the Laserdisc version of the When Love Is Gone scene that is fucking integral to the fucking story and for whatever reason got cut out of every release of the film after the VHS came out. Yes, I'm pathetic. But my love of the Muppets isn't so much to the point that I would feel betrayed if the PS1 game made about them was a steaming pile of shit. I mean, it's not like the good name of the Muppets hasn't been tarnished once or twice. Jim Henson struck gold with his creation, and there were countless amounts of merchandise, spin-offs, porn... Possibly, I'm not looking that shit up. And of course, video games from an Atari 2600 version of Pigs in Space, and even a Tiger Electronics game. That 
is fucking sad. Saying that though, I personally remember this game being a pretty big deal when it was coming out. I remember the integrated ads on Muppet VHSs we had, the magazine articles, and the hype for the Muppets wasn't as high as it was in the 70s to be fair, but the franchise had a string of decent movies with Muppets from Space being released one year before this game. And since Muppets from Space was the last movie for them to ever involve Frank Oz, one of the original and most respected Muppet performers, and even lost <coughs> money at the box office, I think it was in everyone's best interest that the relevance and respect of the Muppet franchise wasn't thrown into the dirt at that point, especially after the lowest of the lows. So why not make a kart racer? At the time they were insanely popular, and you could get all the different locations from the shows and movies, have an excuse to use the gigantic list of characters in it, you could even get the same team behind A Bug's Life and Toy Story 2 on PS1, Traveller's Tales, to take the helm. Slap it on a modern, insanely popular game system at the time, the PS1, make it exclusive for an extra sense of importance and excuse to make it as good as it can be during the console wars, everything here had every reason to work out and make everyone love the Muppets on modern interactive platforms again, as well as movies and TV. I mean, what was the last good racing game they made before Muppet Race Mania? We're fucked! Okay, well obviously we aren't, because Muppet Race Mania is a pretty good game, all things considered. I already said that earlier if you were fucking listening. In fact, I knew it would be a good game from the loading screen. You look me in the eye and tell me that isn't funny. Whoever came up with that idea deserves a... Silver medal. Not gold. It's a bit too disgusting for gold. After that, I accidentally left the menu on too long because I felt so dirty and went to rinse my mouth out after I saw Beaker's extending penis neck and noticed that while the demo was playing, if you press start during it, the game takes you to an options menu for that track, meaning that if you liked the look of whatever track you saw on the demo screen, you could, if you wished, jump straight into a quick single or multiplayer race right from the demo screen. That's an awesome little touch. But the issue is we don't have enough characters or cars unlocked yet, so let's start off with a tournament to unlock stuff. I'm going to be picking Ralph the dog because Ralph is my fucking spirit animal. <laughs> Let's get ready to go. This game is harder than a dead old man. Okay, let me rephrase that. If there were ever a game to perfectly capture the essence of a show that it's based on, this is the game. Oh, come on! Fuck you, you literal fucking Muppet! The game's called Muppet Race Mania? <laughs> well, these races are the epitome of mania indeed. This game's nuttier than a squirrel's... Bullsack. This isn't a bad thing though, luckily, but the main culprit behind why I say this is with the track design. For the most part, they are what you'd expect from a character kart racer. Tons of winding bends, jumps, bumps and ramps, but in some places the game goes above and beyond with additional routes. You know that stage in Mario Kart 64? Yeah, that stage? Most of the races can get like that in Race Mania. There are so many routes and places to jump in front or cut opponents off that you are allowed two power-ups on you at once to keep you on the offensive and help alleviate the stress. And unfortunately, this doesn't feature the biggest variety of Kart racer power ups I've ever seen, but honestly, I think it works so that each race doesn't get any more cluttered than they already can get in the heat of the action. I mean, there's stars, food with googly eyes, chickens, flying fish, explosive penguins, and much more, so if you added anything more, it would just become an unnavigatable headache. You can even grab special powers that affect every car in the current match, and when it isn't you, the game shows you who activated them so that you know who to pick for the next race or try to unlock if you like that power up. Or you could say it gives you a new target to gang up on and stop from winning because they're a cocky little dick. You even get points awarded and deducted for times you hit and get hit, so that's why you can carry two power-ups at a time, and they are literally fucking everywhere for you to grab. They are absolutely impossible to miss, and this turns a standard race to the finish line into a game of multitasking where you're driving to beat everyone while battling and avoiding shit at the same time. And I'm saying more than any kart racer I think I've played. This game is all about distractions. You aren't just racing, but trying to knock back as many carts as possible, all the while navigating some pretty damn tricky <laughs> tracks with all all the different routes that do have a map and compass to guide you they can get that tricky sometimes. All of this can be overwhelming, especially when you're learning the track and don't notice half the signposts and cues because you're so busy trying to stay alive, however if that does sound like too much, there are a good few battle tracks that are entirely about blowing each other up, one of the most fun battle modes in a car racer I've played as well. Since you aren't given any set number of hits before you're out or anything like that, you actually all have health bars like in Destruction Derby or something, and you can ram into cars, jump on enemies and do different amounts of damage for a little more strategy than just hit everyone and win which I appreciated. There are even these insanely tricky Micro Machines-esque stunt tracks that have you almost car platforming through unique obstacles, and once again with multiple routes. These are fun enough on their own, I suppose, and the car positioning and speed control gameplay is very gratifying, but it begs to be played in two-player. With all the different ways to reach the end, it's obvious that's how it was built. I mean, look at the power-ups you can get. 
Great. What the fuck am I going to do with these on my own? In the races, you also collect googly-eyed fruit to fill your boost meter, and you can reverse slash power slide for very tight turns, and this is a necessity. Not only to reach the very stingy entrances to a few shortcuts, but also to help you with the many side ops the game has you do in order to unlock everything, which is also helped out by the Collectathon Adventure Mode. Beating Adventure Mode teaches you every possible route through the race by letting you explore freely, and also rewards you with unlockable Muppets and cars for the privilege of finishing the tasks, which is lovey dovey dumpling. Despite collecting things under a time limit and free exploration being fun though, Adventure Mode doesn't really feel like an adventure at all. There's no hub worlds, boss cutscenes, or anything like that, but for teaching you and giving you more content, it's an alright addition. The thing is though, I'm making it sound way deeper than it actually is. It's still at its heart a simple old kart racer, and I think the good old sexy some call me Johnny summed it up best in his CTR video. Eh, you race a bunch of times to unlock stuff. Even though I had fun with it personally, the single player stuff in this game just isn't that engaging, at least to me, especially compared to something like CTR. So I will recommend that you tackle this game solely as a multiplayer title. Which I won't be doing today because I have no friends. Daddy, I'll play with you. <laughs> What? I'm not playing with you! Who do you think I am? The daycare? Kids suck! Leave me alone, oh dear! I'm not playing with you anymore. Yep, I can see that. Get back to the video. Gladly. So since I'm playing all on my own, the best thing I can do is cheat my way to the top. There's even a cheat to reset all game data if you're a twat. And now I've unlocked the Swedish chef, which is brilliant because he is my spirit person. <laughs> An awesome feature once you unlock everything as well is that you can swap any Muppet with any of the cars they drive, which rocks because they don't only look different, but are all totally different to drive. So if you have a favourite Muppet but feel cheated out by their kart driving style, just unlock another car and switch them around. The controls themselves also have a lovely light and drifty feel to them, a lot like Toy Story Racer, which Traveller's Tales would later develop. And even though I enjoy those kart physics a little bit more, this is certainly a solid foundation. It's so satisfying to just slip and slide around like an RC car. I love the other little things as well, like how the power-ups are listed in trigger order for the PS1 controller so you easily know which power-up to use without any key on the screen. And there's even a button that lets you lock the camera onto the nearest racer so you can see where they are and where to place attacks. Plus you can jump pretty damn high in this game with the tap of a button to not only avoid hazards but squash enemies too. And I even like the starting line boost minigame relying solely on your reactions at that moment while waiting for the race to start. No more cheesing the timing to start every race flawlessly like in Mario Kart. Here you have to get good at being fast with the buttons without making any mistakes for better rewards and it's different every single time. Making it fair for every racer you go up against even if they're further behind in the starting line. If you stay still in the same place as well, you can turn your cart wherever you want to without needing to accelerate, making the stunt tracks a hell of a lot less stressful, and driving into walls much easier to escape. This game is total carnage, man. I'm telling you, I haven't seen this much Muppet violence since CSI Sesame. I'm ready. Shoot. Anybody else? <laughs> It's so hectic and difficult in places that the game itself even reminds you with flashing red text to save every time something changes within the game status because you will forget your own name by the end of a race. And going back to those shortcuts, they do provide a good deal of rubber banding, but in a good way. Where the earth did that go? Crash caught it. Oh! <laughs> he did! He did! Did we get that on camera? If you learn where to take the shortcuts, that's great. You can avoid the destruction for a few precious seconds and get some items for it. But even if you miss the cut or don't take it deliberately, there's always some kind of power up or boost to exploit later on down the road, meaning you'll never be completely left behind if you drive accurately even on the long routes and you're always in the action. That is unless you fuck up the shortcuts and end up stuck in little pockets of dead ends that force you to turn around yeah. leaving you in fifth fucking place. And this is where the free turning carts also helps out massively, so it's clear that the devs thought about the best ways to make the game a little bit easier to digest. I'll make you easy to digest. More puppets? Really? Forgot about me as well, did ya? No, I just don't like you, Percy. Fuck off. Oh, well I'll make sure to tell him that next time I see him. Why didn't your mouth move? Aha! The perfect disguise! And this is why we ended your show. So, have you changed your mind about the game? <laughs> no, it's pretty good. I'll be back, and so help me, you had better be a little bit pissed off with this game, or else I'll get my revenge another way. There are so many tracks to pick from as well, for racing, battling and stunting alike, which cover every single movie the Muppets made up to that point, and all with high quality FMV from those movies introducing the tracks, which is a lovely little touch to further link the game to the thing it's based on and add a little more character. Plus, some of these scenes are just fucking funny, alright? Doctor? 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 Oh, Doctor! 
Doctor. Doctor. Just a couple of doctors. Doctors in the hallway. As far as other visuals go, I mean, well, it isn't too bad. CTR looks a lot more cartoony and lively, if you ask me. And sometimes the models here can look a little bit, well, dead. Hey there, Janet. Hey. You, you're looking good today. Do, do you need anything? Are you okay, Janice? Janice, shall I, shall I get you a, a McNugget? And check out Statler and Waldorf here. Look, we have a winner! A what? Okay, now. <sighs> Honestly, guys, it isn't that hard to animate between two frames whenever you want your Muppet to speak. You're shit. Yeah, the visuals are just okay. Not fantastic, not terrible either. Saying that though, some of the sound effects aren't that great either. The cars don't feature any kind of boost noise, making the game feel a little bit flat sometimes. And this only accentuates how okay the music is? Which is a shame because the composers of it, Andy Blythe and Martin Joostra, had composed some of the best PS1 music of all time in Toy Story 2 and A Bug's Life. And even later on, Wrath of Cortex, all incredible soundtracks, so why this one feels so dull in places is mystifying. Some tracks are great, some are forgettable, and some make me want to kill myself. <laughs> And whenever you hit a final lap, there isn't any added sense of urgency to the music. It doesn't shift up a key or speed up, it just trundles along like nothing happened, which is very strange to hear in something that looks as silly as this. And hey, for characters as loud and in your face as the Muppets, why don't they ever fucking talk? They only make a few set noises when they hit someone, get hit, and win or lose a race. <laughs> During the driving, there's no taunting or even any random quotes for no reason. Isn't that what separates kart racers from other racers? Cartoony antics? How much more cartoony could you get than this? Plus, they had most of the original voices of the Muppets at the time in this game, providing new material for the game. Why didn't they use them enough? Truth be told, I will admit though, I did get a laugh from this line here. Have we been here before? Yep, it's just the lagoon lit differently. Oh! And there we go, so despite my annoying little gripes with the game here and there, I think we have another good PS1 game to send to the heavens. And even though I have praised this game a lot today, I'm a bit worried that Papicarus hasn't done anything to me yet. What's he gonna do? What can a puppet do to me, eh? So today, Muppet Race Mania gets the salvage, but to be honest, even if I wanted to slaughter it, I've completely lost my slaughter gun. I don't know where it's gone. Has anyone seen it anywhere? <laughs> And if it's your birthday today while watching this video, then happy frickin' birthday to you, and please remember to stay beautiful. <laughs> But thank you so much for watching this video today everybody and special thanks to every single person on the screen right now that have helped support this channel via Patreon. And special special thanks to the top tier supporters today, Omama2, Basil, Patrick Ferguson, Robert Alamsha, I Have a Portal Gun, Gamer Man, Star Eye Rolance J, Zakari, Binary Code, Tanner Craft, Chris Ingersoll, Exopaz, Thomas Olsen, Super Spyro Fan 2010, Daniel Leon, Jane Ives, Mitchell Reed, AD Thornton Smith, Oblivion Rising, Ellen Rilpley, Kirsten B, QB, Nathan Young, and Nicole Ganara. Thank you so much, every single one of you.